research tips from Monica Wahi of Death Wench Professional Services. Visit us at www.deathwench.com and let Death Wench do your data. Hi, it's Monica Wahi again from Death Wench Professional Services. Uh, we're continuing the saga that we've been doing through these videos where I've been showing you how I'm analyzing fake data of myocardial infarction survivors. Uh, in my last video, I showed you how to transform data in R, but I admittedly didn't really show you super hard stuff like dates. If you want to do time to event analysis in R or just about any program, you generally need two fields, and these are the fields. You need an event flag, like a field that says one or zero, whether or not they got the event, and you need a time field, and this is usually a little harder, if for the people who got the event, it's the time that it took to get to the event. And for the people who didn't get the event, it's the time to loss to follow up or censoring. Um, or let's say they're awesome, like the people in this data set, which I invented, who f always kept coming for their follow up. So then you have to cut it off at the censoring date. So that's what we're going to do in this video is create those time to event variables. Okay, to make those two variables, we need other variables. We need first the date of presentation. So that's the start date. That's the date they present with their non-fatal MI. Next we, over here, we have the date that they get their MI, their second MI. We're very happy to see that some people actually don't have that filled in because they didn't get one. Um, and then we have this date uh, follow-up. Now you'll notice here that it's filled in for everyone because like this person kept getting followed up from October 2012 until June. You know, obviously they had a heart attack. They should be followed up. And this person was lost to follow up in February of 2014. Um, so these are all, just to remind you, fake people that I invented. Um, but they sure behave irritatingly because they're lost to follow up. Nobody likes that. But in any case, these are the fields we have to work with to make our event flag and our time to event column. Okay, so now we'll go and start doing the work here. Um, I'm going to pull open some code I already made from our code directory. In earlier videos, you saw me run this other code. Well, we're going to do make survival variables. All right, so. Uh, Remember how during the earlier code, during read table, I specified strings as factors as false. So strings would come in as strings, which are character fields. Well, unfortunately, data presentation is exactly that. So if you do this class statement and you ask R, what class is this or what format is this? It says character, right? And in fact, if you ask R, what does this look like to you? You know, just by doing like that looks very much like a character, right? Because it's got quotes around it and pretty slashes. Okay, well that's a problem because you can't add and subtract characters, you know, they don't know you're talking about months and stuff. So the first thing we have to do is convert all of these to a date format. So what do you do? You use the as date command. See, we've got a little arrow here. And so notice how in the as date command, there's this argument, date of pres is the, field and then this format over here. It looks a lot like SAS, the MDY thing, but this is, we'll format it as this MDY. Well, it knows it's MDY in the character field that we're feeding it because we tell it, right? And notice we're going to name this date of pres con for converted. Well, I'll just run all of this code because we have to convert all these dates, the date MI um, and date FU. So we'll go out here and there we go. So are we convinced that that happened? Yeah, we're convinced that happened. Um, but I can actually show you what one of them looks like. You'll notice it looks a little different. Um, here it is. See, there's dashes in there now. So I don't know if that makes any difference. But well, and also, if you do the class, right, you can convince yourself it's a date. OK, so now the next step is a little less intuitive. So what's this POSIX format? Well, if you think about it, what if you want to subtract dates? It's hard to subtract January from February. I mean, that takes a really smart program. So what 
makes it easier is if you just convert the dates to POSIX format, then you can do that. So what I do in this next code is I convert the converted date. So POSIX only takes a date. And I use the as POSIX LT code here, this command, um, to convert it to a POSIX date. See, look at this data press POSIX, right? So let's run all this code. And then we'll convince you that we've changed the class to a POSIX. Notice this, you get two for one, POSIX LT and POSIX T. And um, if you want to look at what that looks like, it looks a whole lot like it did before, only you see this UTC. That's because POSIX actually technically goes all the way out two seconds, which is useful. Now you're probably wondering, why did we do all this? Well, this was the main event here that POSIX is going to be on stage for, which is called diff time. You can't use diff time, which it is what you think it is. It's the difference in time. You can't use diff time unless you've got POSIX dates, right? And this is exactly what we want to do is diff time, right? We want the difference between the date of presentation and the date of MI for time to MI and the date of presentation uh, to time to follow up for time to follow up, right? And in this diff time command, you first put in the thing, um, the second thing in your subtraction equation, second date, and then this is the first date. And then uh, you have the units you can specify, which we're gonna specify days. So here we go doing the diff time. And then let's look at these fields, see if we got our diff time right. So let's scroll up a little bit so we can see the top. Here's the top. And yeah, that looks pretty good, right? These things look pretty logical. Okay, uh, let's clear the screen here and go back to what we were doing. Now, we want to do actually 60 day survival. I mean, you always want to do some day survival, so I just pick 60. But before we get to actually flagging 60 day survival, let's just sur flag survival at all. Because one of the things you might have noticed is I showed you three date fields. I didn't show you a flag for MI. How we would know the person got an MI is they actually had this date filled in for date MI. Remember how I showed you like some of the people didn't have that filled in because they didn't get an MI. So we're going to use this is not NA or is not null for you SQL people uh, to make that flag for the whole data set, right? We're going to worry about 60 day MI later. So we're going to create this field called um, MI and we're going to put a zero in it because we wish nobody had an MI. And then now we're gonna give people MI. So they're gonna have an MI, as I said, if date of MI conf is not null. Or I should say bing is dot NA. So let's look at those fields that we just messed with here. And if we scroll up a little bit, you can see it's working, right? All right, uh, we'll go on the bottom. And then next we have to uh, set a date, right? Well, what kind of a date do we set? We set a date that's 60 days after the date of presentation. That's the deadline by which they're supposed to have their second MI. So how do we do that? Well, now we say as date, um, and here's the date of presentation conv, and then we add 60. That's going to add 60 days to it and we're going to come out with this deadline for them to have their second MI. So let's look at their deadlines. Okay, so let's see here. This person who had their MI May 30th, their deadline is the end of July. They better hurry up. All right. So now we're going to see, see this MI 60. There we get to the 60 thing. So we start by making MI 60 with a little zero for everybody, which nobody had an MI. But then now we're going to update that. We're going to change it to one 
look at this and conditional, where uh, the mi actually equals one, and the date of mi conv is actually earlier than data press 60. You know, in other words, they made it by the deadline. Okay, you can have this one, and if you don't make it to the deadline, you don't get it. And so we'll see who made it, right? Okay, let's go look at those fields. See how they look. Now remember, everybody should have a one where they already had a one unless they got their heart attack more than 60 days later. And unfortunately, oh, here's somebody who did that. So they got their heart attack, but look, they didn't get it by the deadline, all right? And so uh, they got it too late. So that's an example of somebody who just didn't meet the deadline. So just to recap, our whole goal of this whole video is to make two variables. A event variable that says one or zero, whether they got the event or not within the 60 days, we just did that one. And then finally, a time variable, right? So what is this time variable going to be? Just to remind you, it's going to be the time to event in people who got the event, and it's going to be time to censoring or loss to follow up in the people who didn't, okay? So the problem is that's going to be different depending on who you're talking to, a case or a non-case. So what we have to do is basically split the data set and code each separate data set its own way and then put it back together. So our first step is to split it on the MI60 field, right? So notice this, oh, it's a subset command. So that's how you take a subset of data, right? So here's our data set and where MI60 equals one, right, is we're going to make this uh, MI60 to me 60 cases. That's the name of the data set. And then we're going to throw uh, to me 60 cases time to MI as numeric into a field that we're going to name time 60. Well, basically what we're doing is choosing time to MI to throw in a field called time 60. And the reason why we can trust that's going to be less than 60 is because we already, that's by design, that's how we made MI 60. And so let's go do that and have you look at it and you'll believe me, right? So sure enough, uh, here we go. Maybe it's easier if you can see, whoops. Um, so time 60 is nine and time two MI is nine days, 53, 53. And like I said, by design, everybody's gonna have something less than 60. Okay, so that was our non-cases, uh, or that was our cases. Now here's our non-cases, right? So this is just hanging out in the memory here, to me 60, these things here. And it's got all the fields in addition, it's got this time 60 field. Okay, so now the non-cases, we're gonna subset, you gotta use the same field, and since we set it up so it's one or zero, by taking the zero, we're taking everyone else and we're putting them in the non-cases. And this time, notice we're using time to F U, right? Time to follow up, as put, and we're putting it in the field named time 60. By This is how we're tricking it, is by splitting the data set. Now notice we have this extra command here. This is fixing those people who are followed up for like a year or whatever for longer than 60 days. So in this time 60, if uh, to me 60 non-cases time 60 is greater than 60, we're gonna just force a 60 in, okay? So let's go do that and convince ourselves that worked. So here it is. It's a little more apparent here. Uh, so here we go. There's this person who was followed 60, uh, 365 days, but they were cut off at 60. This person was lost to follow up at 26 days. So they're cut off at 26. So that looks about right. Okay, we were successful at that. So let's clean up here, clear our console. Now, our next step is to put the data sets back together. So what are we gonna use? We're gonna use R bind. Now notice on the left side of the arrow, we're gonna increment the uh, letter that's uh, appended at the end. So we're gonna go from Timmy A to Timmy B. That way, if we screw up Timmy B, we haven't erased Timmy A. So R bind, 
R stands for row, row bind. So we're gonna, this is like an append in um, SQL. So we're gonna have um, Timmy six cases and Timmy six non cases. They have the same field names, and this is how we tricked it. We named it time sixty, so our time field is gonna be fine. So we'll go here and do our R bind. And then if you want to look at this, now this is kind of um, goofy looking because you'll notice it that first, see all these zeros? These are the censored ones. So if you go up, here's all the cases. So the cases come first because we just did our bind and I mean, it was our fault. We said the cases first. All right, you've been through a lot and I appreciate it, okay? But I promise you, next video, gorgeous Kaplan-Meier plot with color. If you're checking me out on YouTube, you should really go look at my blog. And if you're reading my blog, check me out on YouTube. This is Monica Wahi reminding you to let Deathwinch do your data. If you like these research tips, visit us at deathwench.com and let Deathwinch do your data.